Welcome back to The Graham Stephan Show. So this guy, Matt Reif, has been absolutely blowing up lately on social media. I think I came across him about a year ago when I was scrolling TikTok, and he had some absolutely hilarious clips of him just bantering back and forth with the crowd. So I started following him, and I noticed his views are off the charts, and he's posting like these three to five minute long segments on TikTok. So he's got to be making bank. In fact, I did a podcast recently with Bobby Lee on the Iced Coffee Hour, which I'll link to down below in the description. And I was estimating Matt Reif has to be making like a million dollars a month, minimum, just from what he's doing. Like That's like the worst case scenario. He's probably making like one and a half million dollars a month right now, blowing up. And his story is actually quite incredible. But this video here, I think, really takes it to a different level. Forbes did an interview with him with the best advice that he heard from Dave Chappelle. And I think this has everything to do with business, money, making money, making it last, everything that you need to know as an entrepreneur or business person, or just if you're curious, how much money you can make in comedy like this, uh, keep watching. I want to share my thoughts on this as soon as you hit the like button and subscribe. That's all I ask for. That's it. It would make me so happy if you did do that because half of you have not subscribed already. So thank you so much. And now let's begin. How does it feel to share a stage with someone like Dave Chappelle? Unbelievable. He, over the past like six months, has become an incredible mentor and has just given me so much advice that I wish I would have gotten like a year ago, honestly. Mm -hmm. But I can't think of somebody better to help me navigate the situation. He's from Ohio as well, started the same age as I did. Yeah, comedy right now is very difficult. Again, I'll link to this podcast down below with Bobby Lee because we go, we go into it here about how comedy has changed over the last 20, 30 years. Like you can't say the stuff today that was really funny like 20 years ago. Like tastes have definitely changed a little bit. It seems like people are a lot more sensitive today than they were back then. A lot of stuff you just can't get away with saying anymore. Even if it's in the name of comedy, even if you're joking around, there's some stuff that, you know, you say it and you get everything canceled. So Matt Reif has so far navigated this perfectly. He's kind of found this really interesting niche of, of crowd work where basically he just finds random people in the crowds, banters back and forth with them. And it's funny. Like this guy is just naturally funny without pushing buttons necessarily. And that is doing incredibly well right now. No one's doing it like him. But Dave Chappelle, on the other hand, truly one of a kind. Like, I, I love the Chappelle show growing up as a kid. I would watch that all the time. He is hilarious, too. And it's amazing to see his sort of uh, comeback because he took a lot of time off. He said, remember, pigs get slaughtered. Mm. He said, don't get greedy. You know, you don't have to say yes to everything because there's money involved. And that is something I've been going through over the past year. has been saying yes to so many shows and so many different opportunities because for the past 11 years, there was no opportunities. This is so true. I think for so many people, I hope you get to a point, by the way, where you get so many opportunities that you feel like, oh, I gotta say yes to everything. I went through the exact same thing. Like I never expected uh, my YouTube channel to blow up like it did. Like I, I never would have imagined I would be here today. Like honestly, when I started like seven years ago, the idea of even hitting 100,000 subscribers would be like, if I did that, that would be a monumental success. Even hitting 10,000 subscribers, like that to me was unbelievable. So when that actually started happening, I was like, oh crap, how can I make sure I don't screw this up? And so a lot of that was like, well, let me start more channels. Let me post more often. Uh, and I think at the peak, we were posting like, 12 videos a, a week, which is insane, 12. Right now I'm posting like, four, give or take, like three to four, but we're doing 12 at, at the peak of that. And I was just saying yes to so many things because I was so afraid. It's like, hey, you, you never know when this is gonna run out. So I was doing collaborations with other people. I was doing podcasts. Anyone who would ask me to do something, I'd, I'd say yes to that. Any sort of interview, I, I, would say, I would say yes to a whole bunch of things just because I, I felt like I've never had these opportunities before. I may as well just see where it leads. He saved me three quarters of a million dollars on a lawyer. Like he, like him, yeah. him alone. Oh yeah, they wanted us to go with this, uh, this, this five percent lawyer, which uh -huh. would have been I mean, like three quarters of a million dollars for a certain deal. Uh -huh. And uh, he was like, "No, nah, I've got a guy who'll do it hourly." Wow. Cost me a couple grand. And just for reference on that, we got to do the math. I think I think he glossed over this. A lot of people just whoop, went over their head here. He saved seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars on a deal where a lawyer would ask for 5%. We could do the math on that. That means it was a $15 million deal. And a lawyer was gonna charge 5% negotiation on that. He just paid a lawyer hourly, five grand, did the exact same thing. 
15 million dollars. It's wild. I have no idea what that's for. It's probably a contract for him to do something with somebody. Uh, probably a year contract, 15 million bucks, which means he's probably going to make like 30 million dollars this year, maybe 25 million. It's insane. But it goes to show you just the power of having someone that you could talk to like that, like that sort of a mentor can save you in so many immeasurable ways. Because I guarantee Dave Chappelle has probably learned that the hard way. Probably had lawyers negotiating on his behalf, taking a flat you know, percentage rate of whatever they negotiate versus hiring someone hourly. Like Dave's been through it. Money wasn't good 14 months ago. I, I was down to like my last couple of months rent that I was like, okay, dude, you gotta come up with some kind of game plan or you're, you're gonna just have to get a nine to five, which there's nothing wrong with, but I'm not able to fully commit and give yeah. all of my time and energy to this thing I really want to pursue and love so much and to put so much energy towards. It's crazy what social media could do. And here's the thing too, a lot of people thought, including myself, I'm like, oh my God, this guy came out of nowhere. He's this overnight success. He starts posting videos on YouTube and TikTok and they start blowing up everywhere. He's getting so many views. Little did I know, like Bobby Lee knew this guy uh, from way back in the day. Like this guy has been grinding the comedy club scene for like a decade and you've never heard of him until recently. It goes to show you, it's like he had been working and, and, and honing his craft for such a long time. It's only now that, that all of that work, nine, 10 years of work, is now being recognized today. It's like, oh, he just blew up out of nowhere. No, apparently he's been doing a lot of work behind the scenes that nobody sees, and he's not financially rewarded for that until all of that work just compounds, and now here he is with, with 20, 15 million dollar deals. So many bouts with depression and self-doubt and just being like, dude, just, just quit. Like, People, nobody likes your comedy. It's just not gonna work out. And just being like, no, dude, just a little bit longer. Just keep trying a little bit longer. All of that kind of, kind of finally paid off. It's amazing when you really think of it, how many people were so close to achieving what they set out to do, but then they just quit. They could be like, you know, a few months away from finally having that big break, but they're like, oh, man, I've been doing this for five years now. Nothing is working. Uh, I'm gonna give it, I'm gonna stop, I'm gonna stop. But they were so close. It's that sort of neuroticism that it's like you're going to push through no matter what that I think makes people successful at the end of the day. If I have roughly 23 million followers on, on all my platforms spread out, that's a lot of people, right? Yeah. There's 8 billion people in the world. There's enough laughter and tickets to go around. Yeah, when you really put it in numbers like that, 8 billion people on the planet, even 100 million followers, a lot of people, but when you really compare it, to the, to the entire world. It's like, it's nothing. His 25 million followers is a drop in the bucket. It's like, you know, a major city. Now, I don't say that to downplay it, but you know, and the, the fact of the matter is there's so many people on the planet, there's an audience for you, no matter what you wanna do, no matter what your taste is, no matter what your style is, I guarantee there's like one-tenth of 1% 1 of the population that's gonna love it. Absolutely love it. And that one-tenth of 1% 1 of the population is more than enough for many lifetimes. Ironically enough, the main thing I don't have in my career, and still don't have it, at any level, nobody has this in entertainment, is just stability and structure. I think discipline and order is wildly missing in today's society. Absolutely, I completely agree with him. That's one of the difficult parts of being self-employed, running your own business, being an entrepreneur, is you get to the office every day, you have nothing to do. Now, I'm not saying it's like nothing to do, but I'm saying like, it's, it's on you to create things to do every single day. It was a big wake-up call for me. I think it was like my third week of working as a real estate agent. I was 18 years old, and like prior to then, I'd show up every day and like basically shadow another agent. I'd, I'd kind of watch what he was doing. Uh, he would tell me, do this, do this, do this. Perfect. I, I got that down. I could take orders like that. Uh, but then there's a few days there where he's not in the office, and I just got there, and I just waited. I sat there doing nothing. And it took me like a few days to realize, wait a second, I can't just sit here doing nothing. I gotta create my own schedule. I gotta figure out things to do. And it was at that point that I really realized, okay, I gotta create my own tasks every single day. I gotta do X, Y, Z, and I need a structure that I could stick with for this. Because if I wanna make it as a real estate agent, I gotta do these things. And so it really taught me that it's like, if you wanna make something happen, you gotta do it yourself. No one else is going to help you on that. It's on you. I've done so many shows and you think these shows are the biggest waste of your time. They probably don't pay anything. You probably get one laugh out of, you know, possibly 30 minute long show. All of the, all of that failure prepares you for what could happen to you on stage at any moment. You know what? His humility is incredible. Just his ability to remove himself from the situation and say no matter what it is, 
I'm going to give it my all, and I'm going to be able to learn from it. I think something like that is so important. I also, I say the same thing if you're starting your own business. Nothing is beneath you. You should never say, oh, I'm too good for that. I'm not doing that. That's not my job. Go and do it. It's great experience. Even if you think it's going to be a waste of time, even if it is a waste of time, if you gain any amount of experience from it, it could be even 1% better after that. Even if you learned one thing, a minor thing, you will improve on yourself. So there's so many things like this, just like he says, put your ego aside, go and do it, get the experience long-term that's gonna pay off so much. Try to write five new minutes a day, even if it's terrible, even if they're not good jokes at all. Because if you get one minute out of the week that Mm -hmm. actually works, that's 52 52 new minutes for the year. If you write one minute a week, that sounds so easy. Right. You basically have a whole new hour right there. This is really interesting. Again, there's so many parallels to this and just about any business you do. If you could just meet five new people every single day and one person a week becomes a client of yours, it's $100 extra every single week over 52 weeks. It's $5,200 extra every single, it's like all of these things just compound. Everything he's saying, just apply that and remove the word comedy and put like your business there or whatever you want to do, your side hustle, your job, anything, just replace it and this applies. DC Curry is a, is a storyteller and sometimes his jokes are ten, his stories are 10 minutes long and there's not a single laughter for those first nine minutes. And I was like, mm. what's it, is it weird that like you're bombing for the first like nine minutes of your, of your story? And he's, he's like, it's not bombing if you have silence. Bombing is when they start booing you. Bombing is when they start talking amongst each other because silence is the most powerful thing to have because you have everyone's attention. They are giving you they are giving you the opportunity to win them over. That's interesting. I never thought of it that way, that you have their attention. It is kind of true. Once you start like whispering and stuff like that, you've lost people. But if you have their silence, they are paying attention. Attention, I think, is one of the most powerful currencies today. Everyone wants your attention. I'm, you're giving me your attention right now. You're giving me. You're giving me your attention. I got that right. So that is like is, is incredibly valuable. So thank you for that. Comedy is a bit like an orchestra. Like you do have to conduct people to the flow of the material you want to talk about. Mm. So just you know, be, be present. Be mindful of the energy in the room. Be okay with silence, write as much as possible, perform as much as possible. So I'm gonna link to my Bobby Lee podcast in the description for the Iced Coffee Hour, which by the way, this I made myself on a website called Kittle. They sponsored an old video of mine, but they're not sponsoring this one. I'm just, I really like them a lot. They've got really good deals right now in printing. So basically I made this myself. You could drag in designs, you could make your own designs, and then you could print them out. And it's really cheap. I think this was like 20 something dollars. And like other hoodies like this from other websites would be like 50. So this is like less than half the cost. Anyway, I have a link down below in the description. Feel free to check it out. As always, feel free to hit the like button, subscribe. Thank you so much for watching and until next time.